Axiom Space is preparing for liftoff. The company is gearing up for some truly out-of-this-world breakthroughs from its third private astronaut mission to the world's first ever commercial space station. So joining us in Studio 57 today are two NASA legends. Uh, <laughs> Peggy Whitson, she's the director of human space flight for Axiom Space and was the commander of the second mission. She's also a retired NASA astronaut who held many positions with the agency and the first female commander of the International Space Station, and Michael Lopez Alegria. He is chief astronaut for Axiom Space and commanded the company's first mission, which also marked the first ever all-private crew to the ISS. He's also a retired NASA astronaut, former president of the Commercial Space Flight Federation, and a former commander of the ISS. I mean... The titles. The titles, the most illustrious people we've ever had here in Studio 57. Uh, welcome, both of you. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's great, great to, to be, be here. here. It's such an honor. Yeah. So, Peggy, let me begin with you. Um, uh, describe to our viewers what the purpose of this specific mission is going to be to the ISS. Uh, what are they leading up to? Well, the Axiom missions uh, that we're conducting now, uh, the, the two in the past, and we have a couple more planned in the future, are uh, helping us build the procedures and the techniques, the things that we need uh, to be available, ready to go and uh, conduct research on Axiom's commercial space station. Mm. We'll initially be attaching our modules to the International Space Station, so this has given us a great way to work out the methods with NASA and with other governments and uh, private citizens uh, to make all of this come together. And mm. so it's kind of like our practice runs. Right. We're obviously learning a lot from each, each mission, changing things up, and it helps to uh, optimize our station for the future. Right, so the, Michael, that's what I was gonna ask you. So this is the third mission. It's gonna be happening in January. There were two other ones. I presume that this was sort of building on what you guys did with the last two. How is this one gonna be different? Different in a lot of ways, but really it's a continuation of us trying to open up access to space um, by making it more available to more people. So mm -hmm. the first mission were all private astronauts, meaning they self-funded. The second one was a mix. We had one private plus two government astronauts, and this is all government astronauts representing the governments of Italy, Turkey, and Sweden. And this is just sort of the next step in how we evolve into, as Peggy was describing, the Axiom Station, and it's helping us understand how to work with NASA, how to develop our own operations team, and really we call them precursor missions because ultimately the destination is the Axiom Station. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. Um, so Peggy, did I mean, you've been in space many, many times. I, I also wonder, I mean, you started your career as a scientist uh, and, and in 1996 when you became an astronaut. Did you, when you first said, I want to be a scientist, when you were first having that conversation with yourself or your loved ones, did you ever dream that you would also be able to take your interest in science into outer space? Well, actually, I started dreaming of being an astronaut first. And is then, that right? Yeah. <laughs> so did you think to yourself that science is the way to get to NASA? It was my interest. It was what I was interested oh. in was science. Uh, so I was, I'm old enough that I saw the first guys walk on the moon. And yeah. so that really inspired me. But I was a farm kid from Iowa, so I didn't really know if it, that would ever be a reality. And it wasn't until the first women were selected I, when I graduated high school uh, that made me think, ah, oh, I, could, I could maybe do this too. And they were scientists, and uh, so it made me feel like I could do it. It took 10 years of applying before I got lucky enough to be selected. Well, but what, what's so interesting about that, you're saying, you're talking about the, the first men walking on the moon. We all saw the right stuff. And in those days, they selected pilots. These guys yeah. didn't really have science backgrounds, yeah. and that has completely changed where almost everybody going up into space has some kind of scientific research background first. And then... The flying part comes after, <laughs> right? Well, it's kind Michael, of a what mix. You, I, Yeah, I mean, as a pilot, I'm, I'm <laughs> the, the old guard, but yes. Yeah, you're we, the old uh, guard. <laughs> there's a lot less flying to be done t today in space and a lot more science. I mean, the purpose of the ISS and later Axiom Station is to take advantage of the microgravity environment where you can do experiments that reveal things that you can't see on Earth because gravity is so preponderant. And so... Yeah, we are, a lot of us are still pilots, but we get trained to do science much more than the scientists have to learn to be aviators. Um, you, you know, when I re was reading about what Axiom is, is hoping to build here, right, and it's basically like, almost like a little civilization in, in lower orbit. Is it lower orbit? Sometimes I get it all yeah. wrong. It seems like something out of the movies. When you started your career, both of you, could you imagine that you'd be working on a project like this? 
No, I think actually that's part of what drew me to Axiom is to be a part of this changing culture of space. This paradigms are changing. It's not just government-led institutions yeah. now. It's much more of a collaboration between the commercial agencies. You know, for instance, Axiom Space, uh, space is also building the spacesuit for the Artemis lunar missions right. for NASA. So their astronauts will be wearing our spacesuit. And so the collaborations are changing a lot, and we'll see much more of that in the future. And so it's really an exciting time to be in space. Do you, Michael, do you think about what this could potentially mean for civilization? And the reason yeah. I ask that is humans are great, but we've ruined a lot of this planet. We, <laughs> we've messed up. We, we've done some wonderful things here, but we've also done a lot of crappy things. And I'm just... I sometimes wonder about this rush, much like the gold rush or any kind of the oil boom. You know, people all of a sudden unmask once we figure out a technology of how to get somewhere, or how to extract a natural resource, then that just brings out everybody. Are you worried about the potential for that kind of calamity in outer space? I think it's actually the opposite. And, Is that right? and I'll tell you why. I, I got, as you mentioned, I was with the Commercial Space Flight Federation, and the reason I got interested in commercial human spaceflight was an experience I had with somebody who was a non-professional that flew on a mission. And this is in 2006, she was doing something called blogging, which was brand new back then, mm -hmm. from the ISS. And it dawned on me that all of a sudden, hundreds of thousands, about millions of people who would not normally care about what's going on in space, were caring. And this idea of democratizing the experience is what really took hold with me. And when you go to space, you are very aware of the fragility of the planet. Mm. You're very aware that we're, like, it is a unique, beautiful oasis in the middle of this vast, sort of scary place. And we need to work a little bit harder to take care of it and to take care of each other. I mean, I was watching your program earlier today, and unfortunately, there's a lot of bad news. Mm. Yeah. And we think that when people can have a bit of what they call the overview effect, seeing the planet from that perspective, uh, the world will become a better place. Can I ask my fourth grade question that, like, if I was in fourth grade, I would ask that I'm running out of time? It has nothing to do with Axiom. What do you guys do on the space station when you're not working? Oh, well, there's the best way thing to do is actually look out the windows. It's, mm. it's just so amazing mm -hmm. to see the planet. It doesn't get old, and then if it happens to be you're on the eclipse side and you're in the dark, then you get to see all the stars. It just gives you this incredible sense of perspective yeah. uh, and your place in it. I love that. Love that. It's great. Uh, so wonderful meeting, meeting yeah. you both. Peggy Whitson, Michael Lopez Alegria, thank you both for being here. It's such an honor.